Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Um, what we'd like to do is continue with the Gematria series and do the number 39. Now, the, 30, the number 39 in Ivrit in Hebrew is Lamed Tet. Now, the relationship between 39 and, and 40 sheds light on the inner relationship of two t categories within creation. They are Chomer, matter, and Surah, form. Chomer relates to the physical and to the non-holy, and Surah is identified with the spiritual and sanctified. Now, the classic example of the progression from 39 of the Chomer to the 40 of the Surah lies in the formation of a fetus. The material development of its Chomer component is fashioned in the womb during the first 39 days of conception. Nevertheless, the final spiritual imprint, its surah, its form, is imprinted on the 40th day. The number 39, Chomer matter, with its symbolic absence of a tsura form, means that man is subject to his base physical nature. Alone, the dominance of the Chomer leads to sin. 39 is connected with blessing. The gematria of the word tau, which means do, is 39. We are told by our sages that at the end of time, God Almighty will bring all the dead back to life with the tau, with the do of tchiat hamesim, with the do of the revival of the dead. We see an allusion to this promise every morning when the dew falls upon the earth and revives the grass. The sages of Kabbalah explain that God possesses Yud Gimel Midot Harachamim, 13 attributes of mercy. And again, 39 represents a threefold expression of these qualities. Man's primeval sin of eating from the tree of knowledge, the Yetz Hadad, resulted in 39 curses being cast upon the perpetrators of the sin. Ten curses were given to Adam, first man. Ten curses were given to Chava, his wife. Ten curses were given to the snake, the Nachash. And nine curses were pronounced upon the Aretz, on the earth itself. The most striking symbolism of 39 as matter, lacking a definite form, is found in the laws of Shabbat observance. The mission in Shabbat 7.2 lists 39 major activities that are forbidden on the holy day of the Shabbat. It's also interesting to note that the word malacha, forbidden activity, is found in a total of 39 times in the Torah. The 39 av malachot, these prohibited acts, are based on the Mishkan's construction in the wilderness. Following its construction in the second year after the exodus from Egypt, the Mishkan functioned in the desert for a total of 39 years. The Mishkan's construction came as an atonement for the sin of the eagle, the golden calf. Now Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, had gone up on Mount Sinai for 40 days to receive the Torah from God Almighty. Based on a miscalculation, the people came to Aaron, his brother, on the 39th day with a demand that he find a substitute for Moshe, their leader, assuming that he had died on the mountain. Invariably, sin is associated with the number 39. One who contaminates his soul in sin is deserving of the punishment of what we call malchot, lashes. Despite the fact that Torah explicitly states that the sinner is subject to 40 lashes, the rabbis legislated that the total number be only 39, which they interpret to be God's true desire. But if the Torah says 39, pardon me, if the Torah means 39, why does it say 40? Which is it? The morale of Prague explains that the reason the person is sentenced with 40 lashes is because God takes 40 days to create an embryo. And the person, by sinning, has undone the purpose of his creation. It is therefore proper that he should be whipped 40 times, one, for each of those 40 days. The Maral adds that in creating the embryo for 39 days, God creates the body, the Chomer, 
And on the 40th day, he blows in the soul, the neshama, which forms surah, the form of a person, spiritual. As far as sensing is concerned, the whole person sinned, and therefore the whole unit consisting of the chomer and the tzura has to be punished. However, when it comes down to the whipping itself, one by one, representing day by day, when we come to the 39th day, the chomer, the body, has been totally atoned for. What remains is only the tzura, the neshama, the soul. The soul is pure. It did not sin and so it need not be punished. Lashes stimulate a process of renewal and purification of a sinner's soul. Before one is flogged, he is called a rasha, an evil individual. After he is flogged, the Torah calls him achicha, your brother. Now the word achicha has a gematria, a numerical value of 39. And the significance of 39 is that it is associated with purification from an undesirable state and the emergence of a new entity. On the 39th day of the counting of the Omer, three important events occurred to the children of Israel. They reached Rephidim. God gave them the quail in addition to the man that fell from heaven. Moshe hit the rock so it survived water for the people. In addition, Moshe died on the 7th of Adar, while the man stopped falling on the 16th of Nisan, Nisan, a difference of 39 days. The explanation seems to be that though the man, in, in fact, did cease to fall after Moshe's death, the children of Israel continued to eat it for 39 days, that which had been gathered on the day of his death. Yosef, Hatzadik, was 39 years old when Yaakov, our father, brought the entire family with him to live in Egypt during the famine. Our tzitzit are also connected to the number 39. On each corner of a four-cornered garment, we are commanded by the Torah to insert four strings, which we fold in half. One of the strings should be longer than the rest, which, which we use to wind around the other seven. We refer to that longer string as the shamas, the, the custodian, the attendant. We then knot the strings twice and make seven winds. After that, we, knot, we then knot the strings again twice and make nine winds. This is followed by another two knots and eleven winds, and another two knots and thirteen winds, and finishes with two more knots. So altogether, we have seven winds, nine winds, eleven winds, and thirteen. Altogether, thirty-nine winds. Number 39 is significant in that it is the gematria of the Hebrew word. Hashem Echot, God, is one. Which alludes to the third paragraph of the Shema where it says, states, where it isem oto, and you shall see him. That by wearing and looking at our tzitzit, we are able to connect and see God's presence. After 39 days of preparation, we approach Yom Kippur with dread, but also with happiness. After 39 days of tshuva and tefillah, of repentance and prayer, we enter the day of judgment, Yom Kippur, with solace and confidence in the biblical promise that God Almighty will always receive our tshuva, our repentance, and cleanse us of our sins. May it be His will to forgive all of our sins and usher in the coming of Mashiach Sikane quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.